Welcome to the Connect with TrueSight webinar series. During today's event, you're able to ask questions of our panelists. The questions and answers along with today's broadcast will be published to the YouTube channel. Today's topic is TSOM Troubleshooting Patrol Agent to TSPS, and Shweta Argawal will take us through this content. Over to you, Shweta. Thanks, Greg. Hello, everyone. I'm Shweta Agarwal, Senior Technical Support Analyst working within Customer Support. We see a lot of different types of issues and some of these are in the area of connectivity between Petrol Agent, TrueSight Integration Service, TrueSight Infrastructure Management, that is TSIM, and TrueSight Presentation Server, TSPS. These can be related to Petrol Agents not connecting, Integration Service not connecting, or it could be network issues or performance issues causing the petrol agent to disconnect or fail to send data and events. This webinar is for all who are using TrueSight Operations Management for infrastructure monitoring using petrol agents. In this webinar, we will be looking at configurations required for petrol agents to connect to TrueSight. We will look at the architecture and flow between the components. We will see what all components are involved for the petrol agent to show as connected on TrueSight console. Further ahead, we will look at few key configuration that one needs to take care while configuring the petrol agents. Then we will look at what debugs can be enabled for getting some detailed information in the logs. And we will discuss few scenarios in the demo that will help one to do some level of troubleshooting for the connectivity issues. We will also discuss on few common issues that one can refer to avoid similar related issues in your environment. This slide here shows the components involved for the petrol agent to connect to TrueSight. Let's have a look at the architecture and understand the functionality of these components and how these connects with each other. TrueSight Presentation Console on top, also called as TrueSight Console, is hosted on TrueSight Presentation Server. This is used for administering and configuring the petrol agents. TSPS is fed with data and events from TrueSight Infrastructure Management Server, that is TSIM. It combines a number of things, such as event management, service impact management, performance monitoring, and data analytics. This component receives the data from its monitoring agents, that is petrol agents and it also receives events for third-party tools. It receives events generated by Petrol Agents too. Petrol Agent does the data collection locally and remotely and sends it on to TSIM via integration service, which is then fed to TSPS. Petrol Agents also generates the petrol events based on the agent thresholds configured at petrol agent level. This monitored data and events can also be forwarded to TrueSight that we will be discussing in coming slides. The flow of the performance data starts from the bottom below in this diagram where you see petrol agents. It monitors the infrastructure according to the instructions provided by loaded petrol monitoring solutions, also known as knowledge modules, that is its KMs. Petrol agent send this collected data to TSIM server via integration service. And this is then fed to TSPS server from TSIM. Configuring and administering the infrastructure happens from the TrueSight console hosted on TSPS server and it then pushes the configuration to petrol agents as variables. However, for connectivity of these components, the flow is from bottom to top in this diagram. In this webinar, we will concentrate 
only on the flow of connectivity of petrol agents from petrol agent to true site. The connectivity can differ based on if petrol agent is sending monitored data to true site or if it's sending the petrol events from petrol agent to true site. Let's talk about the data flow first. For the data flow, during petrol agent package configuration, it can be configured to connect to an integration service. The integration service is connected to TSIM from TSPS console. With this, petrol agent would connect to the true site via true site integration service. In large environments, when a package is deployed and installed, the petrol agent checks in through the staging integration service. The staging integration service provides a single point in the environment where all newly deployed petrol agents can register into the solution stack. Staging policies allow you to automate the assignment of petrol agents to integration service nodes as the agents are first brought online. Important thing to note is, petrol agents do not forward data or events to the TSIM server when connected to a staging IS. Also, petrol agents do not activate any monitoring or blackout policies when they connect to a staging integration service that is IS until the staging policy is applied. Let's talk about the petrol events flow now. For the petrol events flow, petrol agents can generate events based on the agent thresholds configured on petrol agent. Best practice is to send the petrol events via integration service. Then that integration service would forward the events to the remote cell that is configured. Events from remote cell to TSIM is dependent on a propagation policy being configured on the remote cell. Only if you have the propagation policy created and configured for the selective events, those events will be forwarded or propagated from remote cell to your true site main cell. And all TSIM events can be seen on true site console once the TSIM is connected to TSPS. So this is the flow for petrol events. Let us now look at some key configuration required for connectivity for first data flow. For any components to be connected, the required ports should be opened if firewall is enabled. From petrol agent to integration service, port 12124 and 3183 should be opened from petrol agent to true site integration service. The main variable required that tells to which integration service that petrol agent can be connected can be seen in pconfig plus get output. The variable is agent setup integration integration services. You can have multiple integration services defined in this variable. So if petrol agent fails to connect to first integration service, it would then move to second integration service defined in this variable. To configure the petrol agent to forward the fully qualified host names to true site, variables for publish host name and use FQDN hostname needs to be configured. The value of publish hostname pconfig variable will be the device display name in true site. It is also the name that can be seen under agent selection criteria then preview in monitoring policy. Publish hostname variable may help for cluster environments or single server where multiple petrol agents are running on different port. Now, whereas use FQDN hostname will enable the FQDN for the petrol agent. The default value for this variable is no. Once the default value has been changed, you need to reset the connection between the petrol agent and the integration service 
for the FQDN to be displayed on TrueSight console. If the publish hostname variable is set, it will take precedence over use of the FQDN hostname variable. If the petrol agent is running on a computer that has multiple network interface cards, the petrol agent must be instructed about which one to use when connecting to TrueSight. The agent setup bind to address configuration variable specifies which IP address and thus which network card the petrol agent uses to communicate with multiple network cards. If petrol agent needs to be restricted to only listen on IPv4 address, then IP type preference variable can be configured. So these are some important key configuration variables. Now, there are some more important parameters that we'll be talking about right now. There can be a scenario that new petrol agents are not connecting to integration service. It would be a worth check to verify the configuration on TrueSight integration service server in pronate.con file and look for new ISPA.block if it is set to true. New petrol agents will not be connected to TrueSight if the TrueSight limit has been reached as per its deployment type set on tsim server in pronate.con file. In pronate.con file, we have the parameter pronate deployment type which tells what type of deployment this tsim server is configured, if it is medium or if it is large. If the limit of petrol agents added in TrueSight reaches this limit, then further ahead it won't allow any new petrol agent to be connected. If you have appropriate resources for that tsim server, if it can be configured as per large environment, then you can add the mentioned properties and restart the tsim server. Point to be noted here is you need to make sure your tsim is configured and tuned as per the environment that it is configured in this file. You can refer the tuning document and make sure the tsim server and the TrueSight integration service server has required memory, CPU resources and the space disk and then configure the components to tune it as per the environment in case if you want to configure it as a large environment. And in case of large environments, if the limit reaches 250k instances, then we recommend to stand up a new tsim server. Let's quickly look at a demo for the connectivity for data flow, which talks about some configurations that is required and also about some basic troubleshooting steps that we will be discussing from petrol agent to integration service and then to true site infrastructure management server. For petrol agent to true site integration service, if you have firewall enabled, then ports 12124 and 3183 should be opened. These are the default ports that gets configured while installing integration service. In case you have different ports for the TrueSight integration service, then you need to confirm those ports are open from Petrol Agent and TrueSight integration service. Here I have this integration service running on port 12124. I have one petrol agent running on that server. However, it is disconnected as of now. We will see the scenarios and we will try to analyze and troubleshoot this further. If there is a scenario that you are installing or deploying a new petrol agent, then let's see where you will configure the integration service variable. So if we go to administration and repository, you can create your package here. Let's say I have my package here. I'll edit this. While creating the package for petrol agent, you'll get a page where you need to enter the integration services variable.
This is the place where we tell the petrol agent that this is going to be the integration service on which this petrol agent will be connected. This 3183 port will be the port where petrol agent will be talking to the integration service. Most of the times in large environments, this integration service variable will be of a staging integration service so that all the petrol agents are deployed with the staging integration service and then by enabling the staging policy, those petrol agents will be then connected to the different integration services defined in that policy. Now let's go to the petrol agent server. This is my petrol agent server. On the TrueSight console, we saw this petrol agent was disconnected. First, we will verify the services if the petrol agent is running or is stopped. So I can see this petrol agent is stopped here. So I'll start the petrol agent. Once it is started, I will verify the pconfig plus get output to see the integration service variable to which this is connected. If we open this file and look for the integration service variable, which is agent setup integration integration services, I can see it is connected to SUAM2Y integration service. The quickest thing to verify would be go to the petrol home log directory and look for the latest petrol.errs file and scroll to the bottom of the file here I can see connection established with integration service. There can be a scenario where in petrol agent log, you can see that this is connected to the integration service. However, on TrueSight console, you still see the petrol agent as disconnected. In that case, we will go to the integration service. I am now on my integration service server. You can go to the install directory, tsim agent, agent pronto logs. Here you can see and look for any errors in case if the petrol agent is disconnected. The first thing to verify in this logs would be I will go to the debug folder and you will see a file petrol agent cache.dump. This is the file which will tell us all the petrol agents that are connected to this integration service. I can see my petrol agent is listed here and the status that it shows is connected. So the petrol agent connectivity from integration service looks to be fine. If you don't see your petrol agent is listed in this file, it means the petrol agent is not able to establish the connection with the integration service. In that case, it could be a network issue where petrol agent is not able to connect to the integration service on the ports. The other thing, it could be a petrol agent issue where integration service variable itself is not defined or it might be connected to some other integration service. There can be some scenarios where you will see the status is sometimes disconnected instead of connected or it can also be connecting. In case if you see the petrol agent is listed in this file, however, the status is not connected. In that case, you need to go ahead and verify few other integration service logs from the logs directory and check if you see that petrol agent is partially connected or you know, you're seeing some exceptions there can be some scenarios where it is not able to establish the connection due to the agent controller not responding on time. We can get all this information from the TrueSight agent log. You can look for your petrol agent name and if you see something like waiting for AC connection or these errors, it means the issue is from the agent controller where it's not responding and giving the acknowledgement back to the integration service for the connection established for this petrol agent. In this scenario, we might need to go ahead and verify our logs further on the TSIM server. If you see something like partially added in integration service, in that scenario also, it could be some issue on the true site server. 
we now have health check tool you can run the latest version of the health check tool on the tsim server and verify if there are any known errors that could be causing this issues for new petrol agents not getting connected to true site it could also be some tuning parameters if it's not set on the integration service then integration service can also cause some performance issues where petrol agents keeps disconnecting you can verify the file for pnagent.conf as you can see it is not set here so i will now look for the pnagent.conf file in my pronto conf directory here you can see the integration service is not tuned as per the document to understand what should be the maxip parameter set you can look for the performance tuning recommendations guide for the specific version and under integration service tuning parameters on that page you can look for the maxip parameter and the recommended values for a small environment medium or large for large environments this value should be set to 4 gb in pnagent.conf file you need to make this changes in the custom conf directory so that whenever you upgrade in future these parameters remains intact and do not set back to the default values during the upgrade process another important parameter that you need to check in pronate.conf is pronate.apps.is.dataqueue size to set the number of messages limit per thread this variable need to be set in pronate.conf file in agent custom conf folder there is a parameter pronate.new_ispa.block in pronate.conf file on your integration service server this parameter if set to true will not allow the new petrol agents to connect to the tsim server if the tsim server reaches the limit of the monitor instances that it is allowed to configure as per the recommendation based on the environment type the recommended value here is set to true in case if this is true the one thing that you need to verify is has your tsim server reached to the monitor instance limit on the tsim server if yes then check for the deployment type if it is set to small medium or large you can verify this from your tsim server this is my tsim server if we go to pw custom conf folder and open the pronate.conf file you can look for the deployment type parameter in pronate.conf file as you can see in my environment this is set to small if your environment is set to medium however you have enough resources on your tsim server so that it can be configured to a large environment you can refer the tuning document and make sure the tsim server and tsis server have required memory and cpu resources and then configure the components to tune it as per large environment in case of large environments if the limit reaches 250k instances then we recommend to stand up a new tsim server you see your integration service is disconnected on the tsim server the first thing that you need to verify is tsis service is running or not once you verify that on the tsim server you can run this command to see how many integration services are connected and what is the status here you can see the status is connection active there could be a possibility that this is not connected the connection is not active it could be inactive in that cases you might need to check for the integration service logs and verify if there is a connectivity issue between integration service and agent controller the ports that needs to be opened for from integration service to the tsim server would be 12123 the 12123 is the agent controller default port on which it will be listening for the connections from integration service 
there can be a scenario where you're moving or deleting the integration service or you want to move that integration service to some other TSIM server. You can see the status of the integration service as unknown. What you see here right now is the status is green, which means it is connected. You see the status as unknown. In that case, you will not be able to delete the integration service from this TSIM server. To resolve this issue, verify if there are any petrol agent or petrol agents still listed under this integration service. If there are, then try to delete manually. Then refresh the browser and see if you can delete the integration service or if it is automatically removed. In few scenarios, restarting the TSPS server can also remove stale entry of the integration service from a particular TSIM server. So this covers the demo for the connectivity of petrol agent and integration service with the TrueSight console and the TrueSight infrastructure management server. As we just now looked at the demo for data flow, now we will be talking about the events flow from petrol agent to true site. Petrol agents can forward the events directly to cell by configuring the variable event cells. However, it is recommended to forward the events via integration service to remote cell by enabling the variable forward events to IS and set that to yes. Sending events to the cell via integration service is the best practice. If you're sending events from petrol agent directly to remote cell, the remote cell could become overloaded with all the heartbeat that each petrol agent sends to the cell. And there can be performance issues on that remote cells. So we recommend to forward the events via integration service. When integration service is installed with cell, it always tries to forward events to the same cell by default its local cell. So it looks for the cell name in the file pronet.con under agent custom and conf directory. It retrieves the cell's host and port from the file mcell.dir on the same server if the remote cell is installed on the same server. The parameter that tells the remote cell name is pronet.apps.is.cell.name. Once the remote cell receives the events, then you need to create a propagation policy from remote cell to true site cell. Only then the events will be forwarded to your main true site server. Now let us quickly look at a demo for connectivity for events flow from petrol agent to TrueSight integration service and then to TrueSight infrastructure management server. While creating the package of the petrol agent, we can give the configuration details of the remote cell or the integration service if we want the petrol agent to send events via integration service. Here we can see some details that we need to enter while creating the package. If we are putting the details here of the cell name and the encryption key, it means we are sending the events from the petrol agent directly to the cell that will be defining here. However, if we want the events to be forwarded via integration service, then we can select this option as yes. In this case, there is no need to enter the cell name. Once we select yes, you can click on next and create the package. Now let's go on the petrol agent server and see what configuration is added on this petrol agent by selecting these details. This is my petrol agent server. I had run the pconfig output earlier. So I'll just review this file here. Let's look for the variable forward events to is. Here you can see forward events to is is set to yes, which means this petrol agent will be sending the events to the integration service and then integration service will forward the events to the cell. 
Then the other parameter that is important as we discussed in the earlier slide was event cells. Here we can see that this parameter is set to blank because while creating the package we have not entered any cell name. In case if you want the events to be sent to directly to a remote cell which is not recommended in that case event cells needs to be defined in this entry and forward events to is should be set as no. We discussed in our earlier slide that sending events directly from petrol agent to a remote cell can cause cell performance issues. You might see a scenario where after having this configuration, also petrol agent does not send event to integration service and you might see an error in petrol agent logs related to petrol agent connection request to tsim cell null returned hostname lookup failed. If you see such error in petrol agent logs, in that case you might want to check for this variable that is configuration slash format. This variable should be set as BIIP3. So this is another important variable that needs to be set along with forward events to IS for the events to be forwarded to the integration service. We just now saw if forward events to IS is set to yes, events will be forwarded to the integration service and the event cells value should be blank. If you want the events to be forwarded to a remote cell without ISN, then we need to enter the cell name here along with its port number and forward events to IS should be set as no. In some configuration, if you have event cells, variable is also having a cell name and a port number defined in this pconfig and forward events to is is also set to yes. If in this scenario, the events from this agent will get forwarded to the destination the agent chooses, which means here this is the destination. Instead of the integration service default destination, which is defined in the integration service configuration file. The best way would be to remove this entry and keep this as blank and reload the configuration to the petrol agent so that petrol agent does not send the events to the non-default destination. So the combination of these two variables are very much important and can cause the events to be not sent to the required remote cell. This is my integration service server. Here in the agent custom con folder, if we open the pronet.con file, I can see this integration service will be forwarding the events to which cell. So here I can see the cell name on which the events will be forwarded. This will be the default destination for that integration service. If this destination does not matches the petrol agent destination, if forward events to IS is set to yes, then the events will not be forwarded. So these four parameters are important, which says that the IS will be forwarding the events to the cell, which is true. This is the port number on which the cell will be listening. This is the cell name that we can see here and the encryption key of the cell for the communication. Now let's have a look at now let's have a look at the logs to understand the default destination. In Pronto Logs debug folder, you can see event destination cache file. The default destination that we see here is what we retrieved from the pronet.con file on this integration service. Then what we see here in event destination is something what petrol agent is configured for the variable which is event setup configuration event cells. So if we have a different cell defined there then that will be retrieved for that petrol agent and in that case it will be set as event destination. 
here we can see the event destination is same as the default destination. The reason is because petrol agent is not configured to send events to remote cell. An event cells variable was not configured in pconfig output. Here we can see that the event destination will remain same as the default destination of the integration service. This is the main check that you might want to have a quick look always in this event destination cache.dump that can tell if the event destination is different for a particular petrol agent. Now what we saw here is the event has reached to the integration service and integration service will be forwarding the events to the remote cell. Once the events are received by the remote cell, you will still not be able to directly see it in the TSIM cell unless and until you create a propagation policy from remote cell to the TSIM cell. For creating the propagation policy, the first thing that is important is you can go to the mcell home variable on the integration service on the remote cell. Open the mcell.dir file and we will need to define the entry of the destination cell in this file. This can be retrieved from your tsim server's mcell.dir file. So let's go to the tsim server mcell.dir now. Now on this tsim server under truesite pw server etc folder we have mcell.dir from where I can copy this cell entry of the true site cell and we can paste it on the remote cells mcell.dir file and save it. Once these changes are done, we also need to restart the cell so that the cell can reload the mcell.dir file and we can see the destination cell. So the configuration on the remote cell is done. Now let's go to the tsim cell and register this remote cell on the tsim server so that we can see this cell in the true site administrator console. We are back on the tsim server. To register the remote cell on the tsim server, we need to run the iadmin command. Let's do iadmin hyphen h. And this hyphen AC is the option that we will need to use. So to register the cell, we will use the command iadmin hyphen AC with the name of the remote cell that we need to register on this tsim server. Key will be the encryption key of the remote cell, primary host and the primary port of the remote cell. In case if your remote cell is in HA, then you will need to enter failover host and failover port of your secondary cell as well. Then put the rest of the details like environment production and then click enter. This command will register your remote cell on the tsim server. Once the request is successful, we can now log in to the admin console on the tsim server. On this administrator console, we can see our tsim cell is already there. Now we need to add the remote cell so that we can configure the propagation policy. We'll go on the first tab, click on edit and configure the administration settings. Under impact managers, we can see our cell here. We'll put it under my production and apply and OK. Now you, you should be able to see your remote cell on this. Now you can see the remote cell here. So first you need to define what type of events you want to send to the true site cell from this remote cell. So we, we can create one selector for the same and under the selector we can have the petrol event as all these events will be petrol and in the criteria I can select the severity as equal to critical. So I want to send only critical events from this remote cell to the true site cell. You can have some different criteria too. I will now go to the propagation policy and create one propagation policy. I will select my 
selector first and here I will define to which cell I want to send these events to. I can now see this cell here because I have added the cells entry on my remote cells mcell.dir file and I restarted that cell. Only then you should be able to see your tsim cell on this propagation policy. Enable this policy and click on OK. Now from integration service, it will read the cell name from the pronet.con file. Once the events are received on this remote cell, I have now forwarded these events to my tsim servers cell so that these events will be visible on my TrueSight console under this tsim cell. This concludes my demo for showing the connectivity and flow of events from petrol agent to the TrueSight cell. What we saw till now is a key configuration for data and event flow from petrol agent to TrueSight and also some basic troubleshooting steps. In case if you're still facing some issues in your environment, you can follow the steps to enable the debug on the respective components and then reproduce the issue and you can collect all this information and send it to BMC customer support and log a case with the specific issue that you're facing. The default logs of petrol agent gives a lot of good information which is located in petrol home log directory and the log file name ends with .errs file. The next component for which the debug needs to be enabled is integration service. For enabling the integration service debug, you can go to the TrueSight infrastructure management server that is your tsim server and run the command pwdebug on hyphen n with the integration service name to which this petrol agent should be connected. These two logs will be required for the connectivity analysis of petrol agent and integration service. If you're facing issues related to events not being forwarded, then in that case, along with petrol agent logs and integration service log, we also need the cell rule level trace at the remote cell to understand if the events have been reached to the remote cell or not. So these Two commands mcfg trace and mcontrol command can be run to enable the rule level tracing on your cell. You do not need to restart the remote cell so this command enables the debug on the fly. Then as we discussed earlier there can be some performance issues also that can cause petrol agent to not connect to true site or maybe not able to send to send the events to the TrueSight server. In that case, to analyze the performance related issues, you can run the health check tool on your TSIM server and also provide the latest health check tool reports folder output while logging the case with the BMC support. You can also go through the reports folder, uh, the health check tool report. And if there are some known issues or errors, which is critical or error or warning that could be related to these issues, you can follow the steps mentioned to fix those critical errors identified in the health check tool. Let's now look at a demo for enabling the debugs and reviewing those debug logs once. In a scenario where you want to enable the debug of petrol agent as the default logs is not giving much information then this can be done for a windows environment by using the startup parameters of the petrol agent so for windows environment i have stopped the petrol agent service and i will start it with these parameters where debug all and I'm giving the location for the debug file where more debug logging will be written by the petrol agent once it is started. We might need this petrol agent debug log in a scenario. Petrol agent is not connecting to integration service or it is not sending the performance data or petrol events to integration service.
we will see how to analyze this log file but before that we will also enable the integration service debug this is my tsim server to enable the debug on integration service i will have to enable the debug from the tsim server the command to enable the debug would be pw debug on hyphen a and this is my integration service name once you see the debug is enabled on the integration service we can check and see if the performance data or petrol events if it's being forwarded or not to the integration services let's go back to the petrol agent we can run the dump events command always to see if the petrol agent has generated that events or not if you need to verify if petrol agent has started collecting the data for specific instances or not you can run the dumpist command and verify the output file that is generated with this command to see if the monitors and attributes are listed in the output file and if it has the data for the latest timestamp or not if the information is present in this dumpist output about the data and you also see the events are listed in dump underscore events then we might need to see if petrol agent has mapped this events and sent it to integration service or not so we will go to the debug file that it has generated in the petrol agent debug file we can see the data mapping is happening on the petrol agent debug log here i can see the received acknowledgement message from the integration service and this is how the data is being forwarded from the petrol agent to the integration service further if we scroll further we can see some detailed messages attributes and the parameters with its values so this way we can check if the performance data is being forwarded further to integration service or not this file integration service gets created only if you enable the debug on integration service and it has lot of information where we can see if we are receiving the performance data from petrol agent or even if it's related to events we can find that information here and if i go to the integration service debug log file i can see the same data performance data we have received from this petrol agent and with the attributes and the values related to it what we saw now was the performance data debug analysis in the petrol agent debug and in the integration service debug now let's try to find the events related information in the petrol agent debug and then the integration service debug as well if you want to look for the petrol events you can search with petrol underscore ev keyword in the D petrol agent debug log file we can see the petrol events generated in this file if you have event id you can search with that event id as that event id will be the p source id of that event here we can see the p source id is 6657 so this is the event mapping that has happened for the petrol event and this event will be forwarded to the integration service so these are the slots that you see in the true site and you can see the mapping is done over here mc origin key will have the same value and this is unique for all of the events so you can use this as a keyword in the integration service log files once you see this event has been sent now we will go back to the integration service debug log 
So I'm checking the backup file because the file gets rolled over as soon as you reproduce the issue. You can take a backup of the file. Now I will try to find the same origin key in the integration service log to see if the integration service had received that event or not. This event was received by integration service. This is the class and this is the PSOCE ID, the same event. So this is the complete baroc of that event which we have received. It is going to send it to the default destination of that petrol agent and in the earlier demo we had seen how this default destination is decided and then we could see your event will be sent to this destination that it has fetched from the configuration and it further sends the same event same 6657 event will be now forwarded further and we can see your event dispatched successfully to this cell on this port number with this encryption key, which is defined in the pronet.con file of your integration service. So this concludes that the event was created in petrol agent. We could see that event in petrol agent debug log file. We could trace the same event in the integration service debug and Further step would be to verify if this event is received in the cell trace or not. To enable the cell rule trace, we will run these commands. mcontrol trace rule on and mcfg trace with all all stdrr. The plus sign in the output states that the command to enable the debug was successful. Issue needs to be reproduced once you enable the cell rule level tracing. Once the issue is reproduced, you can open the mcell log file and look for the same timestamp if that event is received. Now you can see we have just now enabled the cell rule level trace. So we are looking for a new event this time because the old event with that origin key will not be seen in this cell log as the timestamp will not match. But from this current logs for the current timestamp, I can see we have received petrol EV class events. So it is always better to enable the petrol agent debug log, integration service and the cell rule trace all at the same time. Reproduce the issue, take the backup of all the files and then you can check for the events if we have received it at the cell or not or which component is where we lost that event. You can use the MC origin key always as a keyword to identify and find it in the mcell log files. So from this we we saw how an event is received here. Now once the event is received by the remote cell, this should be propagated to my tsim cell. Only then we will be able to see this events in your tsim cell. So once you find that event handle and the propagation policy is created, you can check in the swell rule trace further after you see the event is received. And I can see this propagation policy has worked and this event was propagated further to this cell, to my TSIM cell. And we can see the destination of my PN cell status is it shows as sent. So this event is successfully propagated to my TSIM cell too. This concludes the demo for enabling the debug and analyzing the debug logs with respective components. True Sight Operations Management has its own troubleshooting sections in the documents. Purpose or goal of this troubleshooting guides is to understand, identify and self-solve. 
and in the event you are not able to self solve then you will already have the items and data needed to open a better support case. As highlighted in this true site page you can see the troubleshooting section is located in the top level of the navigation pane as well as the link highlighted on the bottom right of the screen. We will now have a look at some common issues that we have seen related to connectivity of petrol age. There can be a scenario where petrol agents keeps reconnecting from the TrueSight integration service. The cause for this could be high CPU usage on the petrol agent server or it could also be TrueSight integration service performance tuning is not done. The steps and the solution to fix this issue is mentioned in the KA article 350752. The first thing is verify the CPU usage on the petrol agent server and fix the CPU usage that can resolve the connectivity issue of petrol agent and true site integration service. Then Always verify the MAXIP assigned on the TrueSight integration server in TSIM agent custom conf pnagent.conf file. For the large environment, the MAXIP should be 4 GB for a specific TrueSight integration service. Verify the tuning is done as per the recommendations. There can also be some scenario like if petrol agents are connected via load balancer then there could be a load balancer connectivity issue. You can try removing the load balancer from the variable and directly try connecting the petrol agent to true site integration service and see if that connects. If it connects then it could clearly be a load balancer issue that you might need to fix with your load balancer administrator. We have seen some issues where integration service fails to connect to TSIM server and the error message in the log is agent denied the connection attempt from a particular IP address as it is already connected to another server. This can happen when your true site integration service is already connected to one TSIM server and you're trying to connect the same integration service to some other TSIM server. In that case, the agent controller refuses the connection request from the TrueSight integration service. So make sure the TrueSight integration service is connected to only one TSIM server at one point. If you want to connect it to some other TSIM server, make sure you have disconnected that integration service from your first TSIM server and deleted it from there and then you can try connecting it to your another TSIM server. We have also seen some issues where petrol agents do not connect to the Linux TrueSight integration service and the error message that it writes is security policy is either missing or unreadable. The cause for this issue is there is a file bppmpis.plc which could be missing on the Linux TrueSight integration service host. To identify if this is the scenario and to fix it, make sure the telnet from petrol agent to integration service works on port 3183. Also verify if petrol agent is able to connect to any other integration service. If above checks are successful then it could be that the problem is with this particular integration service. Then you need to copy the missing file from any other working integration service host to this affected one. The path is mentioned here and it is also mentioned in the K knowledge article 356887. After copying the missing file you need to restart the integration service. The path that you see after etc petrol.d it can differ based on your environment as it is the installation directory 
part of your TSIM integration service. If you have installed it under opt BMC TSIM agent, then the path would be opt underscore BMC underscore TSIM agent underscore PW. You can see a scenario where new petrol agents are not getting added in TrueSight. While analyzing the logs, you will see in petrol agent log, it is connected to integration service. And in integration service logs, you would see it is partially connected. And when you come to check the TSIM server log, in TSIM server's truesite.log, you might see this exception saying data addition failed, that is undefined slot is virtual. The reason is a slot is virtual slot missing. In MCSM object.baroc file of this TSIM server cell, that could be the reason the new petrol agents are not getting added as device. If you have your TSIM server integrated to CMDB server, first verify in the base element class that is virtual attribute is SIM enabled. If it's not SIM enabled, configure it to make it SIM enabled and then run the P class info command to synchronize the classes and the attributes from CMDB. A file will be generated with this P class info command mcsm object.baroc. You need to copy this file on your TSIM server's KB classes folder. Recompile the TSIM cell and restart the TSIM cell. The explanation for this is mentioned in article 331711 and the complete steps is described in 358223 which is again linked to the previous knowledge article. This references slide has links for configuring the service integration service path, performance benchmarks and tuning guide links. Then it also has a link for TrueSight Health Check tool. It contains some additional information about what has been covered in this webinar. Now in summary, we covered the overview and flow of connectivity of petrol agents from petrol agent to TrueSight. And we saw there are two types of flow. Either it could be for data connectivity or it could also be for events connectivity from petrol agent to TrueSight. We saw some key configurations that is required in both types of connectivity. We also saw some troubleshooting steps in the demo where we covered what logs can be referred and what are the keywords that we can look for to identify the issues. We also saw some debugging steps, how to enable the debug to log a better support case. We saw the link for the troubleshooting guides as well. And we also saw some references of some important documents and links that we spoke about in this webinar. So that concludes my presentation and I will now hand over back to Greg. Thank you all. Thank you. And now I'll take us through the self-help and contacting BMC. The YouTube channel where this webinar will be posted is available at this link. It contains past webinars as well as a rich set of how-to videos. The Connect with TrueSight webinar schedule that contains future webinars as well as our past webinars is available at this community's link. Also, the hot off the press newsletter contains trending information and to contact technical support via web, phone, email, as well as these social channels are available through these links. That will conclude our session today. Thank you for attending.